I'm working through section two of organic chemistry in the first version of the 2020 NSC chemistry paper. And section two of organic chemistry is always in question three of the chemistry paper. And question three reads as follows. The relationship between boiling point and the number of carbon atoms in straight chain molecules of aldehydes, alkanes, and primary alcohols is investigated. Curves A, B, and C are obtained. Question 3.1. Define the term boiling point and the definition as it is given in the exam guideline document is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a substance equals the atmospheric pressure. Question 3.2. Write down the structural formula of the functional group of the aldehydes. And we know that the functional group of the aldehydes is known as the formyl group, that is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen that is then also single bonded to a hydrogen and then only able to form bonds to a carbon chain in a single direction. Important to note that this is the correct answer. You may not or you should not write an R there to represent the rest of the chain. We have only been asked to show the structural formula of the functional group not how this attaches to the rest of the chain. Question 3.3. The graph shows that the boiling points increase as the number of carbon atoms increases and fully explain this trend. So as we can see here, there are three lines on this graph. Each line would represent one of our different homologous series, the aldehydes, the alkanes, and the primary alcohols. Now, we should immediately be able to identify that the alkanes with the weakest intermolecular forces are going to have the lowest boiling point. So we can already start to say that graph C should be our alkanes. In the same line, we know that our aldehydes containing a carbon-oxygen double bond are polar molecules but are not as polar as the alcohols which contain a hydroxyl group which therefore contains hydrogen bonding forces. So that would then tell us that graph A would then be our alcohols and graph B would then refer to the aldehydes. So question three now asks us, the graph shows that the boiling points increase as the number of carbon atoms increases, explain this trend. So they are not asking for an explanation between the three different graphs. They are asking for why when it has three carbon atoms, does it have a lower boiling point than when it has four, which is lower than five carbons, six carbons, seven carbons, etc. And this is referring to the chain length. And so our answer should explain just that. So we say, as the number of carbons increases, what we are doing, we are increasing the contact surface area. We are increasing the number of sites where intermolecular forces can exist. So when you, a compound has seven carbons, there are far more sites where intermolecular forces can exist. And therefore, we have stronger intermolecular forces in chains that have more carbons. And since we have stronger intermolecular forces or more intermolecular forces, we then say, therefore, more energy is required, more energy required in longer chain molecules and therefore since more energy is required we can say that it has a higher boiling point. Important to note here that the mark allocation is only three marks but we do not know where the marks are allocated so the only way to ensure that we collect all of those marks is by covering those four steps. Firstly saying that more carbons increases the contact surface area Increasing the contact surface area creates more sites for intermolecular forces to exist. Therefore, we have stronger intermolecular forces. A very important step then is to relate that stronger intermolecular force to a greater energy. Stronger intermolecular forces require more energy. And therefore, since more energy is required, a higher boiling point is the result. Question 3.4 now reads, identify the curve A, B, or C that represents the following. 3.4.1 then asks the compounds that contain London forces only. And as we can see, since the London forces are the weakest intermolecular forces, 
we know that the weakest intermolecular forces will correspond to the lowest boiling point and therefore we can say that graph C is the graph of the alkanes once again because alkanes are all nonpolar nonpolar molecules only have London forces that exist between them and since there are only London forces between them they will have the lowest boiling point that lowest boiling point therefore responds or corresponds with graph C Question 3.4.2 then reads, identify the curve that represents the following, and that is the aldehydes, and we are asked to explain that answer. And as we have shown here, we can start by saying graph B is the aldehydes. Our explanation, once again, for four marks needs to be comprehensive. And so we can start by saying that our aldehydes contain a carbon-oxygen double bond, which is polar. That carbon-oxygen double bond that is polar therefore means that it will have dipole-dipole forces. Polar molecules have dipole-dipole intermolecular forces and those dipole-dipole intermolecular forces are stronger than the London forces of the alkanes. The dipole-dipole intermolecular forces are stronger than the London intermolecular forces that exist in the alkanes, but not as strong as the hydrogen bonding forces that exist between our alcohols. So what we are basically showing is that we understand that graph B must be the aldehydes because graph B is going to have a higher boiling point, therefore stronger intermolecular forces than the alkanes but it is going to have a lower boiling point and therefore weaker intermolecular forces than the alcohols. And so once again, to ensure that we get all of those marks, we make sure we cover all those points. We first identify the type of intermolecular forces that exist in the aldehydes, and then we explain why they fit in where they do between the alcohols and the alkanes. Question 3.5 asks, Use the information in the graph and write down the IUPAC name of the compound with a boiling point of 373 Kelvin. And so what we do here is we look for the compound that passes 373 Kelvin and we can see that that compound is on graph B. It is therefore an aldehyde and we can see that that aldehyde must have four carbons. So any compound that contains four carbons must get the prefix but and since it is a, an aldehyde it gets the suffix anel so the correct answer to 3.5 is butanol question 3.6 write down the iupac name of the compound containing five carbon atoms which has the lowest vapor pressure at a given temperature so we are asked for a compound containing five carbon atoms now we need to identify is it an alcohol, an aldehyde, or an alkane. And the way that we do that is by seeing that a high boiling point corresponds to a low vapor pressure. We remember this because a high boiling point is a result of strong intermolecular forces, and strong intermolecular forces also result in fewer particles escaping and becoming a gas, and therefore a lower vapor pressure. So what that tells us is that the alcohol with the highest boiling point is also going to be the substance with the lowest vapor pressure. And so what we are being asked for is for the IUPAC name of the compound, this compound being an alcohol that contains five carbons. And so we know that this is going to be pentanol, but we need to remember that the question stated that it must be a primary alcohol. And the only way that this can be a primary alcohol is if this is pent, five carbons, and, and it must be a primary alcohol, which means that that hydroxyl group must be on the first carbon, and therefore pentan 1 ol. Very important to remember in this section is that we do not always know where the marks are allocated in the marking guideline. So the only way to ensure that you answer a question fully is to cover the four important points. We always start by identifying the source of the intermolecular forces. So when we are talking about different chain lengths, we always talk about a difference 
in contact surface area. When we are talking about different functional groups, we always talk about the polarity of those functional groups. Then we identify the type of intermolecular forces, and that would be done either by identifying London forces or dipole-dipole forces or hydrogen bonding forces. Then we compare those forces, saying London forces are weaker than hydrogen bonding forces, or we say that a greater contact surface area results in a greater number of London forces and therefore a stronger intermolecular force. Our next point is the important one that we often forget, and that is for relating our intermolecular force strength to energy, and that is done by saying stronger intermolecular forces require more energy. And then finally, once we have related it to energy, our last step then is for relating that energy to the given physical property. So those four steps must always be included because we do not know where the marks are allocated, whether it is a three or a four mark question.